You're listening to Tony Graham here on Binjam 91.5 from Studio 2, and it's time for Tech Talk with Matthew Diggerson. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Tony. Thanks for chatting to me again about technology. Yeah. Well, after the debacle, the former President of the United States doing tweets, I think we all got tweeted out. Unfortunately for me, I, I don't use uh, Twitter. But if you want to buy a tweet, what does that even mean? It's an interesting concept, isn't it? Jack Dorsey, who's the billionaire co-founder and CEO of Twitter, is attempting to sell his very first tweet. And he's selling that as an NFT, a non-fungible token. Now, I'll get back to that in a moment because I'd never heard of an NFT before this particular story. But the idea of buying a tweet sounds very strange because it's not like a piece of artwork that you can pick up and take home and hang on your wall buying a tweet that's there in the public domain and has been for probably the last 15 years sounds very strange. The tweet, of course, is the words on that tweet are just setting up my Twitter with Twitter spelled T-W-T-T-R, which was the first tweet that Jack Dorsey put out and, in fact, the first tweet on Twitter. And so the idea of buying it is with this concept called an NFT, a non-fungible token. What it effectively does is applies a digital signature to that particular tweet, and there can only be one digital signature. So if you're happy to pay for this first tweet, then you get to be the one that says, I own that signature, I own that digital signature. No one else can have that unless I decide to sell it to them. So it's probably like buying a signature, except the difference is if you've got a famous sports person or a movie star and they sign something for you, they can sign thousands of things for you rather than just the one. So in this one, I'm not sure how much it was going to go for. The first bid started at $80,000. It's already over $2.5 million, Tony, for the rights to say that I own that tweet. I'm not sure that people in this world are sane, but that's what it's about. The whole idea here is that it's obviously advertising for this company that allows you to use non-fungible tokens to be able to say, sell anything of a digital nature. It sounds like a crazy world we live in. I won't say anything. I'm just, I'm just going to move on. I, I just, uh, I just have to move on from this one. I'm never right. <laughs> now, <laughs> folding smartphones. Um, that was so yesterday, apparently, and uh, the Oppo uh, X rollable phone could be a smartphone game changer. You seem to think. Just when we thought the folding phone, smartphone revolution was going to take over the world. We've got phones that fold sideways, phones that fold top to bottom. But you're right, Tony, they say yesterday now, Oppo has come out with a prototype, you can't actually buy it yet, for a rollout phone. And it's quite clever. I've watched a couple of videos of it, and essentially it looks like a large-ish smartphone. You press a button on the side, and it literally rolls out from side to side. So you end up with a very large smartphone, maybe a small tablet type size. So if you haven't got the yeah. energy or it's a bit too time consuming to go and fold out that phone, then how about rolling out the phone as an alternative? Uh, it is really yeah. going yes. to, to, towards that idea that we want to carry something that's small, but when we're looking at it, we want it to be larger. Whether it's foldable, whether it's rollable, that's what all the manufacturers are trying to work towards now. I always think of the TARDIS, the old Doctor Who TARDIS. It's large on the inside or infinite on the inside actually with the TARDIS and small on the outside and that's what they're trying to achieve with phones. They want to make them as small as possible to put in your pocket, put in your handbag, carry around quite easily but when you're using it you want it to be as big as possible and whether it's sliding, whether it's rolling, whether it's folding, this is really the battleground in the future of smartphones. I don't know what the final answer will be, I don't know if we know that someone's even come up with the final answer yet but the rollable smartphone is the next little battle in the battleground of the bigger smartphone? Well, I think it will go somewhere because these smartphones are morphing from a uh, small smartphone to a tablet-sized device you can use as a tablet or roll it back to a phone again. I think uh, that's certainly going to be the way things happen. That's my, that's my tip anyway. There you go. The, um, the, the yeah. future of technology, according to Tony Graham, rollable smartphones. Well, that's, it. that's if you can believe it. <laughs> Well, that's what they're predicting, but we'll see, I guess. Now, um, Matthew, would you feel safe on an all-electric aircraft? Now, I know that there's been a few of these things built, and um, 
And what about if NASA had built it? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think there's certainly there is certainly some credibility when NASA puts its name or anything. And you're right, there have been some all electric aircraft being tested. They, they apparently are very good for short flights. So when you've got uh, in America in particular, a lot of people use aircraft as a commute to work. So when you've got that flight sort of maybe 30 minutes to one hour, that's where electric aircraft are fantastic. But people still have that concern. You're up in the air, the battery goes flat. What do you do then? Uh, likelihood of running out of fuel on a plane is very low. Likelihood of a battery going flat. People are a bit more concerned about it. But NASA have now built uh, an all-electric X-plane, they're calling it, the X-57 Maxwell. And the idea of this is really for NASA to develop some certification standards for this whole emerging electric aircraft industry. And I think NASA basically came to the, the conclusion that if they were going to have to certify some of these, if they're going to do testing on some of these, they should build one of their own. Uh, the idea is mm. that they're, they're going to be quiet, they're going to be efficient, they're going to be reliable, and, and NASA's going to put their stamp of approval on it. The first testing they're doing at the moment is really with the aircraft on the ground, which sounds pretty safe. I'm not too concerned about getting in an electric aircraft while it's sitting on the ground, but they'll do a whole range of tests while it's plugged into power uh, to basically make sure that the, the electric motors can power up, they can power down, they can do all the things they're expected to do. And then the next stage of testing, which is where it gets a bit more interesting, is when they load it up with batteries and then put it in the sky and run all those same tests that they did on the ground with it up in the sky. Uh, still a little way away from the point where this sort of aircraft will be maybe used with real passengers on board or maybe even freight on board. But at this stage, it's good to see NASA's dipping their toe in the water and, and charging ahead with the idea of an all-electric aircraft. Yes, yeah, very good, Matthew. And we've been flying with Tech Talk here with Matthew Dickerson on Binjang 91.5. And thank you for coming into the studio today, Matthew. And for now, it's uh, it's goodbye this morning and, and back to the, the great vibrations with uh, Angela. And keep tuned for this afternoon. Hopefully something you won't see on the NASA aircraft is great vibrations.